Revolt in Asturias, in Algiers, for Friends of the Theater of Labor, for Sanchez, Santiago, Antonio, Ruiz, and Leon. The scenery surrounds and crowds the spectator, compelling him to enter into an action that classical prejudices would have made him seen from the exterior. He is not before the capital of Asturias, but in Oviedo, and everything turns around him, the center of the tragedy. The scenery is designed to leave him defenseless. On either side of the audience, two long streets of Oviedo. In front of them, a public square with an adjacent tavern. In the middle of the theater, the Council of Ministers table, topped by a gigantic speaker labeled Radio Barcelona. And the action unfolds in these different places around the spectator, constrained to see and participate according to his position. Ideally, someone in seat 156 sees things differently from someone in seat 157. Act one, scene one. Breaking news on the legislative election. 
Among the results that have arrived in our offices are as follows. At Cuenca, the head of the Spanish Renovation Party, Mr. Goconches, has been elected with 4,225 votes against 2,615 for his adversary, the citizen Lopez, the socialist candidate. The pharmacist. Well, well, well. It has just informed us that in Salamanca, the leader of the Spanish Confederation of Autonomous Conservative Parties, Don Jim Robles, triumphed with 7,200 votes, surpassing his adversary 5,610. The Conservative Republican Party triumphed in Zamora, where Don Miguel Mora's ballot was elected in its totality. Hello, hello, before communicating the final results of the legislative elections, we will transmit the closing figures of the Madrid Stock Exchange. My turn to deal. Call <laughs> Ronda. All right. Well, spot on. Your wife must surely be cheating on you. Hey! I'll take my cards back. Pardon me? What a ruckus. Surely they won't get the last laugh. Thank you, Lou Rua. Now clear the table. I am on the side of ideas. And people may say what they will, but education, now that's a beautiful thing. And LaRue has earned his degrees. Okay, and plus three equals 14. You know, my forefather always taught me that without discipline. Your, your turn to deal. I'm not complaining, but things are bad. Uh, the pharmacy isn't earning as much anymore. They are less and less sick. Heck, there was even a time they came for us uh, for as little as a headache. Now nothing short of a double congestion. Well, I voted for him because he was humble. Dear listeners, the following in our broadcast is scheduled for tomorrow. At 8 p.m., half an hour of contemporary music. At noon, assorted music. At 3 p.m., a broadcast dedicated to hospitals. At 4 p.m., a retransmission of the football match of Letic de Bilbao and Real Madrid. At 6 p.m., Romanzas de Zarzuela. At 8 p.m., Baltimore Music. The news brought to you by the paper La Vanguardia. The definitive results of the legislative's elections are the following. Moderates, 139 representatives amongst whom 104 radicals, 11 conservatives, 10 liberal democrats, and 14 independent republicans. The conservative party obtained 207 seats, of which 113 belong to popular action. 32 to the agrarians, and the rest to the traditionalists and monarchists. Loveless parties obtain 99 seats, of which 57 go to the socialists. The communists only have one representative, Bolivar, elected in Andalusia. Scene three. Uh, it's the same with the women who are allowed to vote. Their place is in the home, folding their husband's clothes. Uh, como han cambiado los tiempos? Ah, how times have changed. I, for one, until I was 25 in the polls with my father, and he would point out the right candidate. You know, and that way it would be certain traditions were kept alive. Is, is that how you turn out to be such an idiot? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> this guy's me. No, I uh, beg your pardon, this is a provocation. No, 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 he's simply fat, and he is a brute. Quiet, boy. Attention, attention. Official sources reveal that the incumbent president, Mr. Alcala Zamora, has entrusted Mr. Luru the care of constituting the new cabinet of ministers. All the swept away, stone. Order. Finally, order. Finalmente, un poco de disciplina. Finally. Some discipline. Shut up! The miners are striking, and when they find out that LaRue's been appointed, all oh, hell will break loose! <coughs> Los mineros han tomado armas y están marchando sobre la ciudad. The miners have taken arms and are marching on the city. He's still a youngster, gentlemen. So it's true, you slept with him, haven't you? Ah, oh, pig. pig? It's my fault! The miners entered the city! The sound of the combat draws closer. The chance of the miners rose while fighting on coal. He did come! Now you see. Hey, no. It's been 
long enough. Let me tell them. They're here! The miners enter in files, shirtless, armed. They halt a few steps away from the boudoir, forming a semicircle, and suddenly cease their chanting. Pepe stands in between both groups. In the paper La Vanguardia will publish tomorrow the following commentaries pertaining to the elections. The legislative elections have marked, as all honest Spaniards hoped and expected a victory have marked. A victory for the moderate parties over the leftist extremists. A triumph of a pounded, wise and democratic politics over the nefarious revolutionary objectives held by the proponents of Marxism and the international. Related to the rise of the room to power, the article continues as follows. Just like the election, the arrival to power of Don Alexander LaRue and his new cabinet satisfies the whole of Spain and gives her the guarantee that our great civilizing democratic and social tradition will continue to blossom. Owing to his experience, his moderation, and his wisdom, the new prime minister will know what lessons to draw from the elections, namely, to determinately oppose the intentions of men and parties that act on behalf of foreign nations, that wish to annihilate the vital and sacred forces of Spanish nation. Don Alexander Lu receive in the name of the real Spain and all real Spaniards this homage of our trust, of our recognition, and our admiration. Catalonia is up in arms, uprisings are bursting forth throughout the Andalusian countryside. Oviedo is under rebel control. So I told him, you think this life is fucking paradise? No, he said. I thought I had seen everything after years of misery, but this is quite a sight. ¿Y qué crees? La revolución no se pelea con abanicos. What did you expect? The revolution isn't fought with hand pens. We have not come back home yet. Cheers. No need to be stunned. There's no reason to vote Jacob. Yes. But it isn't those who leave that are most unhappy. It isn't those who stay. Sure, but let me tell you something. Where I'm from, women cry, but they cry alone. <laughs> and sex ought to do alone too? Of course not, since it doesn't require crying. Enough chatter. <laughs> Listen to this decree. Any and all counter-revolutionaries captured in possession of weapons and all saboteurs will be immediately executed. The people are charged with the enforcement of the present decree. ¿Qué es eso? How is that? That settles it. Also, we agreed that work vouchers will replace money and it should work fine. Now we have to decide what to do about those damn barracks. Gomez put us in charge of getting the job done, yet they're still resisting. Todavía resistiendo. Lo único que necesitamos es un asunto de los estudiantes. Y nosotros los jóvenes. All we need is an assault carried yeah. out by the students. Yeah. And us, yeah. the young folks. So what? So you can all get killed like little rabbits? Don't speak so foolishly just because we gave you kids rifles. Oyenme. Yo ha pensado en algo. Listen to me. I thought of something. A bus loaded with gunpowder that will crash into the walls. The only problem is we need a guy to drive it. And another to light the fuse. And, and those two, well, let's draw straws. Okay. Ruiz, Leon. The two of them step forth, salute with their upheld fists, and leave without a word.
Another problem is the lack of supplies. The big business owners in the region refuse to release their stocks, and in our present situation, there is no room for pity. We have to strike fast, yes. rapidly. Yes. yes. Atención, Radio Madrid. We just received the following official memo from the Minister of the Interior. Taking advantage of the atmosphere of peace and cordiality surrounding the recent elections, the professional Marxist and anarcho-syndicalist revolutionaries have created insurrectional movements in various urban centers across the provinces. In Oviedo and in the Asturias, they have managed to join forces with a group of mine workers. The instigators are known. They are the leaders of the Communist Mining Syndicate and the citizen Xavier Bueno, leader of the Socialist Party of Oviedo and director of the paper The Advance. On October 20th, they circulated the order for a general strike, from which we extract the following that the public forced surrender or else be given death. The government has since taken all measure likely to ensure the demise of this movement and bring back the order which all its faith desires. Okay, something that has been bothering me, let me tell you, is school. Schools are needed. Many schools. I, as you can see, can't read. It was my well who read me the news. But then he died when a mine caved in. Por eso, creo que se deberían construir escuelas. That's why I think schools should be built for everyone I mean. Yeah. <laughs> there are the people of the valleys and those of the mountains. And we must tell them we aren't slaves anymore. Mm -hmm. Up there in the grazing hills, they don't know. They never know. My old folks live there. They don't know. Certainly. We will send the men before the first snows. Los organizaremos. Mm. We will organize them. Yeah, but, but hear me out, comrades. We, we have to make sure not to pillage. You know, the, I just saw a fellow helping himself out in the warehouse. He goes to go out saying, you know, I swatted him with my rifle. Of course, there's good and evil everywhere. And he's well dressed, too. Antonio, mm. you have a good squad. You will just have to make sure to do a few rounds after we're done. We cannot let anyone dirty our revolution. No podemos dejar que nos ensucien la revolución. Sí. We also have to link to the sailors. Mm. One could say, this is their capital, oh, right? Yes. So we should tell the buddies in the coast to join us with their battleships. I found out there are mutinies aboard those cruisers. Así que por eso debían los que fueron desde el campanario de la catedral. Those bastards are still firing from the bell tower of the cathedral. They just shot dead a child who was crossing Constitution Square. Oh my God. You see? <laughs> I told you. That was Ruiz and Leon. Muy bien. Que no sea en vano. Very well, let it not be in vain. I have little to lose. I'm too old, but you, you youngsters, you kid, think, think of all that is still new. Ruiz was my childhood friend. All these stories are making me hungry. Hey, boss lady. Oh,
Public Square. Scene 3. Alonso. What then? Well, thank you. Thanks very much, ladies and gents. As a shoemaker would at Fortuna. That's in Andalusia. Atención, atención here, Radio Barcelona. Dear listeners, we will read to you the latest telegrams relating the events in Oviedo. Considerable numbers of smugglers and miners entered the city yesterday. The first through the St. Lazarus Borough and the streets of the Archdiocese and the street of the Magdalena. The latter through the Borough of St. Lawrence. Voila! As I say, hey, Sanchez, you told me you had been to Porcuna. So you've seen the peppers dangling out the windows and the tomatoes drying on the rooftops, huh? My mother would tell me, farewell and thank you. In all of Spain, there's nothing like Porcuna. Eyewitnesses who miraculously escaped the fury of the destroyers assert that the revolutionaries blasted with dynamite the university, the library, and the Bank of Astoria, along with most buildings that surround March 27th Square. Official sources indicate that the insurgents laid siege to the Civil Guard barracks. After cutting off their access to water and electricity, they bombarded the barracks with trench mortars stolen from the arsenal. It appears that the people within were successfully evacuated. And I used to chase the lizards. But they would always escape through the, through the small walls of dried stone. I would mangle my fingers trying to snatch them from between the cracks. Alonso, my mother would say, Deja en paz a las lagartijas, son criaturas de Dios. A telegraph from the Sabra News Agency. The revolutionaries are in control of the Bank of Spain and the 14 million pesetas that it contains. The Episcopal Palace and the Sanctuary of the Oviedo Cathedral are in flames. The sanctuary was doused with oil and gasoline before being set aflame. So, I would go up to the little mountains. No tree, Sanchez, not a single one. The heat scorching my throat and the smell of absence it would make you thirsty. In the evenings, I would come down. My mother would tell me, Asegurate de besar, Alonso. But me? Before praying, I would tell her. From Madrid comes the following news. We have learned from official sources that the revolutionaries have taken control of the weapons factories of La Vega and La Turbia and of the military arsenal. The convent of the Carmel Fathers was attacked. The superior, Father Ufracio del Nino Jesus, who in escaping dislocated his hip, was transported to a hospital by charitable souls but was ripped from his bed and executed by a revolutionary firing squad. And the Eternal Father told me, Alonso, eres mi hijo. Tete, ellos pelean un revolución, tú eres mi hijo. So I know I can die. The devil looks after his own, so to speak. And when I am dead, all of God's angels will come down and tell me, Vamos! Vamos, Alonso! Vamos, no seas malo ahora! And I will say, No. So to speak. Since, of course, I will go with them. And we will rise up and up and up again into the blue, like the great sun that rises in the fields at noon. Below, everyone in Porcuna will be sitting under the fig trees, cutting their bread and 
and drinking, and the Alcatraz will hide the sky, and Alonso with it. I will stand before God, carried by his angels, and all the while he will tell me, Alonso, eres mi hijo. Hiciste bien amando los pimientos y los tomates, e incluso las pequeñas montañas sin árboles y también los muros de piedra y los lagartos. And Alonso will tell the Eternal Father, he will tell him, eso es cierto. Nunca pedí mucho, soy de porcuno después de todo. I'm from Porcuna, after all. Scene four. Light in the tavern. Alina. Vamos! Vamos! Here, are the big big hunters. Enter the representatives from the employer's union. Pharmacists, Sorola, and other businessmen. The miners shouted themselves behind the table. Sentence. My speech will not be long. The revolution is in need of your supplies and your merchandise. Otherwise, she cannot survive. If you don't give them up, the revolution is doomed. And in us, you don't really matter. Her, you wouldn't understand it even if I told you. Basically, if you refuse to open up your warehouses, a son muertos. You're dead. If you do open them, asegurate con nosotros. You can count on us. Sora. Right. One last thing. It will be done on the spot. I will count to three. Uno! Dos! Tres! Your call. No. Your turn. The pharmacist. Yes. I thought so. Scene five. Detainees are let in. A civil guard officer, some bourgeois. Sebastian. This law is up for immediate trial. You will be the attorney. Charges? The accuser. The officer of the civil guard gave the order to open fire with a reasonable provocation. That's it. Defend it. Your turn. Your but. Your turn. But this man is like myself. He's done nothing to you. Also, it was his job, his duty. Maybe he has children. What right do you have to kill him? After all, what right? You see, you act well as an attorney. Sentence to death. Next, Proxima. He's a major distributor. Hiding behind his curtains, he shut up on calls right off and killed three. I have no need for an attorney. I can, I know how to defend myself. Especially facing this kind of justice. I despise you. It's true. I shot the crowd. Bird will free. <laughs> but a may have met us. A heap of the beer that had unos volvieses. Quizá por morir. Kill me. You'll see. You are still some bourgeois who knows when to die. Well, at least this one isn't a coward. Condenado a muerte. Next! Behind the wings. Fuego! Curtain. Act 3, Scene 1. Attention, attention, Radio Barcelona here. The revolutionaries have been crushed in Catalonia and all other provinces. 
Kompanis and his ministers have been arrested. Mieres and the sectors that surround Oviedo have returned to normality. Only the city itself resists. The regular troops have been ordered to wait for the arrival of the legionnaires and the Moroccan skirmishers that are now an hour away, commanded by General Lopez Ocoa. The troops' morale is excellent, as intended by the cabinet's plan and the personal intentions of Don Diego Hidalgo, Minister of War. The capital must not be left defenseless. That is the purpose of employing mercenary troops for counter-revolutionary operations. The legionnaires have enthusiastically accepted their mission to replace their brothers from the regular Spanish army, having proven themselves in Morocco eminent specialists in counter-revolutionary tasks. They will be engaged in operations of an exclusively military character, for which their courage, discipline, respect for their superiors, and habit of victory are perfectly suited. From the wings and from the other end of the sphere, behind the audience, trumpets blared from there. On an adjacent scene, a few legionnaires are fighting. Scene two. Here, Radio Barcelona, Fabra Agency. An extraordinary meeting of the Cabinet of Ministers took place today at 2 p.m. From the official memo and the interviews accorded to journalists, it can be concluded that despite the gravity of the events, the government is examining the situation with appropriate calm and serenity. Green lights on the small central stage, a rectangular table covered with a symbolic green mat. Sitting around the table, six ministers converse, the room in the center. The government is entirely persuaded that the revolutionaries are running for a certain disaster. Besides the technical expose by the nature of the interior and the report by the chief of police, both concerning the measures already taken and those to follow, the ministers also heard Don Diego Hidalgo's expose, who, as minister of war, urgently recalled the state of regiment of the foreign leaders stationed in Morocco with the purpose of re-establishing peace and order in the Asturias. Unanimously, the government approved this initiative. Numerous detachments of civil guards have been dispatched to Catalonia and Oviedo. The garrison at Barcelona, which accounts for a tenth of the Spanish armed forces, has been doubled. A state of siege has been proclaimed in the region. All armed rebels found will be shot on sight. Here is the message that Don Alexander LaRue, President of the Council, has just addressed to all Spaniards. In Catalonia, the President of the region, forgetting all of the duties imposed by his office, his honor and his authority, gave himself the liberty to proclaim the state of Catalonia. Faced with this situation, the government of the Republic decided to proclaim the state of war throughout the country. En tiempos de paz es posible llegar a un compromiso. In times of peace, it is possible to compromise. The state of war having been proclaimed, martial law will be applied without weakness or cruelty, but energetically. Be assured that challenged by the rebellion in Asturias, and the anti-patriotic actions of a Catalonian government that declared itself seditious. The soul of the entire country will soar on a wind of national solidarity in Catalonia as in Castile, in Aragon as in Valencia, in Galicia as in Extremadura, in the Basque country as in Navarra, and in Andalusia. And it will join the government to reinstate both the power of the Constitution, that of the state, and all laws of the Republic as well as that of the moral and political unity that makes all of Spaniards a people of glorious tradition and future. Every Spaniard will feel his cheeks reddened by shame at the sight of such foolishness enacted by only a few. The government asks them to not harbor in their hearts a single feeling of hate towards any of our country's particular groups of people. Catalonian patriotism will know how to oppose this separatist folly within their country and will know how to observe the liberties granted to it by the Republic under a government that is loyal to the Constitution. In Madrid, as in all other provinces, the exaltation of its citizens is with us, with their support 
and in, under the authority of their law. Continuamos la glori gloria historia de España. We will continue the glorious history of Spain. for these bandits, scandalize the neighbors, but I understand how things are. They were good looking men, isn't that it? See, I, I was charged with performing an investigation, so I do it, but politely, you understand, very politely. No, my little one. Huh? Well, anyways, all that I desire to know, uh, really, a little detail really, is 
who killed Don Fernando? I have been told it must have been one of these prisoners. Kill! They kill! They kill him! They go almost a child! No, 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 come now, come oh, calm down. Well, who killed Don Fernando? It happened in front of your establishment. It is a family who wants to know. Too many for us to bury. Douse them with fuel and light them on fire. Just how you would with rats. That'll disgust the others. Ah. Ah. My lovelies, you are lucky to be in the hands of a worthy man. Some of my colleagues will press a sealing metal into your sides to loosen your tongues. I will only do such things if pushed to the limit. Now, you, young one, your name? <laughs> well, never mind, it's all the same. All I care to know is who killed Don Fernando? You know, the businessman? Who killed Don Fernando? Fue la gente. As you please. Shoot this one too. And the next one. And you. Do you care for your skin? How did Don Fernando die? Precisamente. Fue la gente. Precisely. It was the people. Oh, bastard. Bastard. Your fat fate is set. Come. Come closer, old man. Answer! Come. I never asked for much. Farewell and thank you, says Alonso. <laughs> Come again. Do you find that funny? I will teach you how to play clever. <laughs> Good God! Told me, Alonso, you will not die! The devil looks after his own, so to speak. Unbelievable! He is mocking me! Take him behind the market and execute him! It is starting to stink in here! Ah. Is it? ah, my good captain, how joyful I am. I'm not disturbing you, oh, am I? At your service, Mr. Counselor. Were you just delivering justice? Well, see here, I want to speak to you about the women and children. Their screaming is such that we're going deaf. Apparently they are hungry. Could the army perhaps... They exit. The sergeant takes the captain's seat. Attention, attention, here, Radio Barcelona. The Minister of Interior reads the following note. The revolution has been completely crushed. The troops have taken control of Asturias. Thanks to the Spanish government, heroically assisted by the army and law enforcement, we have just saved in the West the essential principles of democracy and Latin civilization. This being said, the repression was enacted humanely and with generosity which must be highlighted so that the world may know that the Spanish government, Republican and constitutional, democratic and parliamentary, in the critical spotlight of the world, has just delivered in repressing a strongly armed rebellion, an unprecedented example of tolerance, humanity, and generous execution of the law. Despite the considerable numbers of soldierly casualties, despite the destruction of several cities, despite the polarization of mass human labor, art, the government kept the number of death sentences to a minimum, having changed most into prison sentences. Papa, thanks to the captain. Lives the clock, wipe the table. It's nice out, huh? Yeah, it is. This is more cheery than the Irish around, right? Oh, for me? It is one or the other. Do you agree? I'm just the same. The day before last, for example, when the thing is at the peak, I was behind the covens window hiding and shooting at you. Hey! Where are you?
are you going? Sergeant, the captain said to shoot them, so we're going back there, given there are no other stores around. Oh, and other anarchists. Well then, you see what you got for an idiot? You could just keep calm. Would you like a cigarette or a glass of wine before they dispatch you? No, thank you. <laughs> Since you, you can see, the Legion isn't made up of brutes. You really want to do this favor? And I'm a right hand. I have a crack. The vale. sergeant signals the order. Vale. The prisoner raises his arm, clenches his fist in the salute of the right hand, <coughs> hey! and brings it down to the snout of one of the soldiers. The three of them jump on the prisoner and take him away by beating him. On stage! This morning, still, some houses crumbled on their own. In a way, this bombardment will generate jobs. Yes, my dear. And fifteen dollars in the basement without daring to move. They were out of control. And again this morning, they arrested another foreign journalist who was looking for God knows what. Surely another spy of this rabble. Darkness. This morning's Council of Ministers approved unanimously the measures proposed by the Minister of War to reward the brave defenders of the Republic. For General Bate, commander of the Catalonian Division and Lopez Ochoa, director of operations against the Asturian rebels, both promoted to the rank of Lieutenant General. General Bate's current post will be carried on by the General Rodriguez del Vacio, one of now no longer the Inspector General of the Army. I am the old Santiago. Nunca he sido muy feliz. I've never been very happy. My father was a miner. My grandfather was also a miner, and all others before him. And then I got married with a good woman, to be sure, but we were never really happy. I had a son, a miner who died, crushed in a mine shaft. I never did anyone any harm. And I would have conformed. It's just I thought of the young ones. I think I, I fought bravely, maybe because I had little left to win. Cuando la nieve se derrita, nadie en la tierra volverá a hablar de mí. When the snow melts, no one will ever speak of me on earth again. Sanchez. Durante la huelga dijeron que yo fui la instigadora. During the strike, they said that I was the instigator. I was 17. It was my brother who taught me. I believed. You're paying me in revolution. I believed in my revolution. I tried reading, because you know what they say about education, educate. But I understood better with my pike striking the minerals, with my pick striking the minerals where the sparks would jump. So many dead. So many dead. But something else will come. Y yo les digaré que no puedes pelear la revolución con abanicos. And I will tell them you cannot fight the revolution with hand fans. I am Antonio, and I come from the mountains. The others didn't know snow. They would laugh if I told them that it was for her that I fought. Yes, before in the snow, I didn't need to think. 
she is so pretty and also so simple. When I went down, I saw the black shapes and the injustice. So I thought of my snow and the scream it makes when a foot is sunk in it. But I had time. I would have time is what Santiago would tell me. They gave me no medals. Soy Pepe. I am Pepe, and the Lord will tell me. Los más infelices no son los que se van, sino los que se quedan. The most unhappy are those who leave, but those who stay. Maybe I would have wouldn't have to stay. Because of the sun and the flowers in the garden of the public square and also for Pilar. But I can't stay for her. I love the neighborhood ball. But the people would tell me, Pepe, no te tomas a ti mismo en serio. Pepe, you don't take yourself seriously. That was a long time ago. Santiago, Sanchez, Antonio in the bass, Ruiz, Leon, they all called me kid. They were right. We were picked at random. Who oh, took for the bus? There it is. Soon, the snow will fall. It can't all record that. And who will remember? And the flutes back home. It can be we did it for nothing. See you go see little kid. If God wills it. Right. The government has published the official number of dead, wounded, and missing government troops. Dead, 323. 129 soldiers, 11 carabiners, 70 security guards, 11 civil guards. Wounded, 870. 550 soldiers, 16 carabiners, 136 security guards, 168 civil guards. Missing, 7. Five soldiers and two security guards. On to the side, we're going to the nights are getting colder. Winter is near. The answer. Pronto caerán las primeras nieves. Indeed, soon the first snow will fall. Think of all that is still new for you. 
Ruiz, one of my childhood friends. 